Mr. Chairman, um, if I may, there's one other minute issue. This is not involving the last meeting. Um, we review our minutes from previous meetings, compare them to the videos. And one of the things that we determined that back on August 22nd of last year, there were three things I'd like to amend. Most of them are, are relatively simple, uh, well, they're all simple. Uh, there was a typographical error in a, there, in a sentence. There was a name uh, that was, uh, it, it should have said uh, Nashville Bar Cab instead of Nashville Bar Bike. And then wanted to make sure that uh, the approval of Samuel Owens was, as a booting employee was clear. Um, so if, if you could, uh, if, if appropriate, if you would just, if someone could move that, what we'll do is attach the, the memo that I sent you. We'll just attach that to the minute book to make sure there's no question that of, the, of the intent and the action of the commission. And I'd make a motion to uh, amend the August 22nd minute to reflect what Mr. Fields just said in the memorandum that was circulated to the commissioners. Can I second that motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Fields. Uh, we have a public hearing today. Uh, we've got a uh, request from Dad's Record Service regarding reallocation of operating. Uh, um, and altering a zone um, of dad's two emergency record zone uh, which was previously designated as Carter's zone. Mr. Fields. Um, one of the things if you'll remember several months ago uh, Carter's abandoned their zone and uh, you awarded to dad we didn't name that zone dad's two. Over the last several months in uh, their operation they have made some a determination that they could better operate it a little bit differently by taking uh, Clarksville Highway as a as a border and taking the northern part of what again was the old Carter zone and if you look over to the large map the, the large green area in the northwest corner typically we would call the the uh, Jolton area uh, it would take the northern part would actually be absorbed and we would recreate the dad zone and absorb that into the dad zone then the lower part would uh, would be attached to West Nashville. So so the Dad's two zone would basically go away. The northern half would go to the uh, would would be moved over to uh, Dad's, and the lower section would be moved to West Nashville. And and Mr. Mitchell's here, and he can probably better explain. It. We appreciate the members taking today the time to look at that. zone in the 30 minutes required. We've made it every time, but we're having to really, really get out to do that. This will just help us be a little more efficient at getting there and keep the police officers from having to wait as long. With your permission, I'll, I'll bring a map forward and give it to you if that's okay. Thank you. I was just about to say the same thing. These are better maps than what Mr. Fields is giving us. Well, the one you carry around anyway, the large one is a little bit difficult to carry around. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thanks, sir. Private industry versus government quality. Yeah, yeah. You can see where we've marked the Clarksville Highway. The Clarksville Highway down would go to West Nashville, and they would cover both sides of the Clark Highway all the way to the county line. And on the upper side would go to Dad's. And it's a good, clean, even split right there. There'd be no wondering who's getting which side of the road. It's a complete split on that Clarksville Highway down. Uh, as you can see, that side, well, of course, through two bridges connects Dad's to uh, West Nashville to that part of the zone and the other side directly connects to dads. Is there someone here from West Nashville told to agree with? It would be me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. You build a monopoly here? Uh, no. <laughs> no. As, as you'll recall, uh, we have three companies that operate multiple zones. 
uh, West Dad's. Nashville, Dad's One and Dad's Two, uh, Topro, Cotton's, and A.B. Collier, and then <coughs> Martin's, Bailey's, and Mike's Custer. So three operators have three, operate three zones. So Mr. Mitchell, you feel that this would in, improve service? Absolutely, yes sir. And why? Well, just the ETA time would be a lot quicker. As so, I say, we're able to handle it. You choose not to approve it, we're able to handle it still, but it would be a lot more efficient. We so say the police officers are having to wait as long. If you mind, I'll show you where we're located and give you an idea. We're actually located in Prospect right here. That's where our location is. So you can see from there to there, as opposed to West Nashville right here going to there. Mm -hmm. It's a long drive for us. Now, we would be covering, you know, two parts of the highway up that section. They would be coming here and there. I, I went to the Emergency Communication Center and met with the uh, their uh, GIS staff, the mapping staff that, that did handles the that does the mapping, but then also monitors uh, the backups and so forth and so on. And they they had no from a technical standpoint, they said they had no issues with it and were not aware of any operational issues either. And we're talking about the thirty minutes that Metro requires from the time they yes, place sir. a call. Yes, sir. not an individual call. No, sir. Has there been any opposition? Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, Mr. Fields, has there been any um, formal request to speak on this matter by the there not. public? Uh, is there anyone in the audience uh, who's present today wanting to speak on this issue? At this point in time, we'll close the public hearing uh, so we can deliberate the request from uh, Dad's Record Service. Seems to be a rather reasonable request, um, particularly since Mr. Mitchell is, uh, runs and operates both Dad's too, as well as West Nash, or excuse me, yeah, Nashville. So this change would just allow the West Nashville trucks to service this southern portion of the old Carter zone. If there's no opposition, I'd like to make a motion to approve the rezoning of the south southern portion to West Nashville and the northern perch portion <coughs> formerly known as Dad's 2. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. I uh, second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Next item on our agenda is a disciplinary issue. We have a complaint by the Metro Nashville Police Department, uh, Officer Augustine, uh, against Topro and Cotton's Wrecker Service. Officer Augustine is present, uh, and I, I will apologize to him publicly. He actually began a communication with me last fall. I was under the impression that there was a different process being undertaken, including uh, involving inspectors and others. So it did not get here as, as, as timely as it should have. So I apologize to him, but uh, he had some issues and I felt like it made sense for, to bring him, to let him appear directly to you to have the conversation. Good morning, good morning. or good afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, consistently over the past, probably a year and a half, maybe two years, um, Cotton's is consistently late on their 30 minute obligations. Um, and I, I work, I'm on the uh, fatal crash unit. We work off county wide air. So we, we get to hear all the calls for record service um, that come in <coughs> through communications and the dispatches. Um, I uh, have, so when, let me back up. When we're not investigating crashes, we're enforcing traffic laws. We're not doing that. We're towing vehicles off the interstate. It's, it, it got 
to the point for me that I would ask the dispatcher to notate in the call text the time of acceptance from Cotton's and then I would monitor myself instead of having to call dispatch repeatedly. At the end of the 30 minutes, I would then request for the backup. And it was, and it's, it's consistent, it still is consistent. Uh, two days ago, um, monitoring, sitting in the office and hearing communications. Um, there was an officer, um, 323 boy, um, I'm not sure exactly where she was. She was working a uh, non-injury crash she had requested, um, I, I called and spoke with her. She had requested Cotton's at 1809 hours. Uh, they arrived on scene at 1940. So it's approximately an hour and a half that she waited for the zone wrecker to <coughs> arrive on scene. Uh, another issue that's consistent in that is when we, if I call for a backup, the backup commonly in that area is AB Collier. And that, that does not solve the issue because it's, Again, it's so it, they may go to the backup, but it's still the original record that was in route anyway. So it may, it's still you know 45 minutes or so before that original dispatch truck is there because they it's the same company backing itself up in the neighboring zones. So that's that's my concern. And there's I uh, I just kind of ran out of space on the form that was provided. Um, last time I came to the commission meeting, it was when anchor towing uh, dissolved their zone, and there was, um, I think, Dads and AB Collier um, had petitioned to take over that zone. AB Collier was going to take it over and run an AB Collier North and AB Collier South. The commission's concern with that was trucks crossing the city and running, um, you know, trucks with it. They would change the color schemes on the trucks is what was uh, presented. Um, <clears throat> the company in question, and I, I have a picture, had the, the, the hood of the truck says Topro, the door on the side says AB Collier. So the, the trucks are mismatched in their labeling. I don't know if that is, the commission is aware of that, but that's the issues that I have observed. Yes. I was going to ask if, if you have, if you could present to us some specific times and instances where they were beyond the 30 minute period that's allowed. I don't have a, a log of that. I, um, communications would, um, cause I, I do notate again when they, when I request, and then I'd notify dispatch when they have arrived on scene. So that's, I, I would I would have to. You do contact. have that one instance here, though, in your pocket that that was notated. A, a, a picture of one of the trucks, yes, sir. No, I mean you said another officer oh, called just, in at eighteen. Yeah, I, I had scribbled it down <coughs> on a notepad. I'm talking to her on the phone. Can you testify? <coughs> testify now about the number of times that you can recall or how you know 90 percent of the calls that I have requested of the zone record but in an actual firm number I do I do not have that no but there's but 90 percent of whatever they are in your estimation of the right, total number. When, when I request I, I can vouch for myself um, talking to other officers that work South Precinct uh, I'd mention it, and it's, it, it's, so it, you talk to any officer in South Precinct, and they would probably tell you the same thing. Would and you say that 10, 12, 15? <coughs> could, could you estimate how many calls that 90% is? Just a rough guess. Uh, so laugh. Last year, we were extremely busy with fatal crashes. We had a record year. Um, so I did not get the opportunity to get out of the office as much last year. But in 2018, um, I would probably call them 30, 40 times through the year, just if I happen to be in that area. Do we have someone here from AB Collier, Cottons, and Topro to address the complaint? Um, 
could you please step forward what i think we need to do so what's your name my name is david williams david williams david what i'm going to do is i'm going to put office officer augustine under oath so he can testify as to his complaint uh and then you'll have an opportunity to ask him questions um and um because we're going to hear the complaint today and uh but i need to get him under oath first yes sir officer augustine if you'll come back before the microphone and please repeat after me i swear or affirm that the testimony that i'm about to give I swear or affirm the testimony I'm about to give. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right. So, Officer Augustine, if you would please, um, with as much specificity as you can, state your complaint. Um, and when I'm, what I mean by specificity is if you could give uh, dates um, and then what I'm I'm a bit concerned about is we don't have the uh, the logs before us so that we can see okay on this date you know you placed the call and they accepted it at 1 23 a.m. and they didn't show up till 3 a.m. Um, that's the kind of evidence I was hoping we would see um, and then of course Topro or AB Collier would you know then have an opportunity to come in here with some documentation to maybe counter that if, if they had that sort of evidence. But you could also just orally testify to that too, so I'll let you go ahead. Um, again, I, I, don't, I do not have a log. Uh, I don't have specific dates and times. Um, it's just uh, been a recurring issue. Um, I uh, frequently tow uh, abandoned vehicles off of I-24 uh, when the weather's bad and um, we're kind of slow at the office between working investigations. Um, on average, um, I would say response time is about 40 minutes. Uh, that would be it from three in the afternoon to 10:30 at night. So it's it's. And I I work second shift, so 2:30 in the evening to 11 at night, um, and it's um, during my work hours that has been the um, norm. It looked like in your complaint that was filed back in October, there was really three matters you brought there. It was the 30-minute emergency tow <coughs> obligation, and then as you mentioned earlier, trucks with multiple company displays, and then finally, Hope Pro and AB Collier trucks were often respond in cotton zone. Yes. Okay. And do I understand correctly the three companies we're talking about? The blue down the bottom right corner is cotton there along Interstate 24, correct? Yes. Okay. And then, I don't know whether you call that orange or brown, right in the middle where 65 goes. That's AB Collier. Yes, sir. And then Topro's up in the purple there where you have your finger. Yes. All right. Those are the three companies we're talking about in the three zones that you've experienced this. Uh, I, I don't tow a lot in the tow pro dedicated zone. Um, our, our fatal crashes primarily on the southeastern part of the city. And you mentioned the south and precinct, which would be down 24 in your cotton area, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so the main problem about the 30 minutes is along 65 and 24 in cotton and AB Collier. Yes. Gonna, uh, I do have the picture of the truck that I had mentioned. I don't know. <coughs> okay. Cool. To the hood, there's tow pro that's on the hood. Up there? Yeah. Okay. And the door, <laughs> a, a B call here. All right. Mm -hmm. so it's, I mean, that's confusing for us because when we call, when we call for a record, and the zone record, the zone record responds and it's the truck's right label. And that's you know, who, who actually accepted the call. But and how do the how does the delay um, impact you or impact what you're trying to do? What's, what's the effect of that? Uh, it's taking an officer out of service 
for an extended period when it's not necessary. We could move. We could, um, myself, because um, I'm kind of um, self-regulated as far as my time, but patrol, um, when they're sitting to wait, they're done with what they need to do, but they're, they're, they're waiting, and the call, their call volume is backed up, and they've got other stuff to take care of. So it does affect call times for citizens of Davidson County. You guys are a little short-handed as it is. A bit. I understand. Thank you. Thank you very much. Would you like to come forward? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon. Can we ask him a few questions? Of course. Hey, officer. James Weaver, Waller, Lanston. I'm a counsel for uh, TOPRO. Officer, hi, how are you? Hi. Um, this is a copy of your complaint. Yes. <clears throat> I think the commission has it. We the do. date on that complaint is? October 28th. 19? 19, yes. 2019. Yes. Can you, can you tell us the number of times that TOPRO was late in your direct knowledge between September the 28th and October the 28th, 2019? Um, let me ask you to look at this one other time. There's a section on that about the Metro Code that is violated. Is that, can you read me what is written on that section? Uh, there is not anything written, written on this one. Um, I did, the one I did submit did have the code written on it. I don't know if, if this was the first one I submitted. Um, but I did, I saw that once I, once I faxed the form over and I then refaxed a second form with the Metro code listed. And I can respond a little bit if you notice to the top of that particular copy you're looking at, you'll see the smudges and you will absolutely enjoy this. I doubt this it. was in the fire. <laughs> And this document came, this was one of the documents that we had in the fire at the trailer. So that's the reason the black smudges that you see was when we were peeling them apart. It's very, po I mean, I would not question that there was another record, but I, there were some records we just don't have, including, you know, we lost one entire record company's 30-year record. So I, I, 30 years. Record. 30 years. But I guess for the record, Mr. <coughs> Executive Director, the, the, the copy that was sent to my client this is what has, that section is blank. Billy? Correct. Thank you. That's all I've got from him. Thank you, sir. Uh, if, if it's okay, Mr. Chairman, the, my clients here would like to address uh, uh, as, you, as the board members have pointed out that there's no data with this. We actually have the data. Uh, on the response times, but I'd prefer, I'd greatly prefer, y'all would probably too, to have my client do that as opposed to me stand up here and yak to you. So if it's right. with your permission. Thank you. Good afternoon, Commission. Um, without specifics, it's hard to truly answer this complaint. Um, how, I, however, I do see it as a comment and something uh, uh, we should look into due to the respect I have for the officer and for this commission. Um, while I can't say, actually, yeah, I'm sorry. I need to put you under oath. Oh, yes, you'll sir. please repeat after me. I swear or affirm that the testimony that I'm about to give. I swear uh, and affirm that the testimony I'm about to give. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Thank you. Um, while I'm not aware of any incident, um, I, I can't say that we have not sent the wrong truck to the wrong zone. Um, I have dispatchers who are human, and in the heat of battle, sometimes they make decisions. Um, they're, they are charged with uh, keeping safe the motoring public, the stranded driver, and the officer on uh, top of the scene. We take pride in our response times, and in fact, uh, I have a report for our response times for the last uh, 12 months that I'd like to hand out to the board now. <coughs> Uh, for 
from all the data I have, I, I don't see where we've been late. I don't, our averages are perfect. Our median is perfect. Um, uh, I hate receiving this kind of comment, uh, but I am trying my best to answer it without the specifics laid out in front of me. We also called the ECC Tuesday and talked to a Mark Hutchinson, who's in charge of customer surveys, and he has no complaints on file for our companies. Um, furthermore, our company policy is, of course, to follow the ordinance. In fact, as we speak now, my dispatch supervisor is going over the record ordinance with each dispatcher now, having them sign that they've acknowledged receipt and that they've read and understood the ordinance. Furthermore, I also have pictures from our dispatch office showing that there's a memo posted please to please send the right truck to the right to the right zone. Um, again, without any other specifics, I, I don't know what else I can answer. Well, we, we saw this truck that had Pro on the hood and cotton on the door. Yes, sir. Okay. Per the order. Do you own both those companies? I own all three companies. All three companies. Yes, sir. Do you have trucks that have Toe Pro on the hood and cotton on the door? Yes, sir, I do. The ordinance specifies only the door only. It doesn't specify any other part of the truck. Sure. Right. Do you acknowledge the confusion the officers have? I can understand the, the confusion, yes, sir. You got any proposals on that? Uh, I'm up for any ideas. We market ourselves as Toe Pro. Um, that's uh, our private customers. That's how they know us. Um, so we, for, for their sake, we like to have some of that on the truck so their security guards allow us in, in their, on their premises. And you gave us this the response time report, which shows average times and median times. Yes, sir. Are you aware of any exceptions outside of the 30 minutes? Uh, I'm not this aware of it. Tell me specifically each. No, we have over 6,000 calls. Like you said, 6,000 calls. Right. Um, Do you know of any complaints that have ever been made to your companies about being over 30 minutes? No, sir. I, I am aware of no complaints. Okay. And that's furthermore why I called the ECC to confirm that no complaints <coughs> have been made. Uh, to, my to my knowledge, the TLC also has no complaints on our company regarding response times either. Until until Except now. This one. Until now. In October. Yes, sir. So the number of calls being six thousand eighty. These are the calls that would fall in the category of these all wrecker zones only. All three companies that we we own. Yes, sir. Do you own just the three companies? Yes, sir. Who prepared this and how did they do it? I did yesterday. We have a dispatch software called TOPS, <coughs> Towing Operating Systems. Uh, other towers in this room, in fact, use the same software. Pulled out a report called uh, Response Time Analysis, I believe. And that's what I printed off yesterday. Officer, can I ask you a question? Are you, um, when, when these incidents occur, do you, do you all make a complaint? Or how, how do you make them aware that the response time is a problem when, on those occasions when it occurs? I, I personally, I will tell the driver, and I, I tell the driver, I know it's not you, but here's the issue. Um, as far as formal complaint, um, I, this, this, this may be the first formal complaint you've received. I, I, I don't know. Um, I, the, um, the, um, I apologize, the, uh, the two or three, I'm not sure what you guys call them, the ones that, um, they have the little office there at Metro Southeast, and they'll do the taxi inspections and stuff. I, I walk over and talk to them occasionally and voice my concerns. Um, it was advised to me that, um, not a lot can be done until I filed the, the complaint you have in front of you. And it, the, um, there was that, that same night as the uh, couple nights ago that the, there was an hour and a half, um, there was a, uh, another officer who um, had called in. He had been waiting approximately 45 minutes. He had dispatch call. Um, Cotton's 
from his advice that their, dri their, their driver was on scene. Over the air, he stated that there was a driver that stopped by. He had a car. He was going to go drop it at the yard and come back, but he was showing on scene. So that may have, I, I don't know if that's going to affect what, what he's provided. We've not had any, I mean, from the police department, when, when Officer Augustine provided this to us, that would have been the first com formal complaint. Uh, we've not had any communication over the last, actually several years on any of the emergency companies not meeting the 30 minutes. I think, I think part of the problem that we have is it's a large county and traffic has increased. This ordinance was written in 1999. Traffic is very different today than it was in 1999. Um, you know, no excuse, it still says 30 minutes. So it's, but it's, there, there's certainly challenging times, but as far as complaints, they're just not there. Now, uh, you know, I, I don't know what's there and what's not in terms of what could have happened, but um, that, that's what we've got. Anytime, I, I mean, we, we, we drive home to all the company, all the merchant companies, you know, if you can't get there, you know, get to the backup. If you know for sure you can't get there, call a backup. But again, a different, you know, we have, there are 15 zones, there were 15 zones, there are now 14 zones, and uh, there are, uh, out of that, three companies operate nine of those 14 zones. So it, it's, it's certainly challenging for, as, as the commission over the last several years, in 99 when the ordinance was written, uh, the commission basically would not allow somebody to operate more than two zones. In, in the years that came forward, somewhere between 2003 and 2012, the commission made a determination that it was okay for companies to operate more than one. That also then, the immediate thing that was obvious when I came back in 2012, is you have one, you have a company that's having to operate multiple pieces of equipment. For instance, if you're a C-class record, you're gonna have to have at least two C-class records if you're operating two zones. In order to do that, you're gonna have an outlay of anywhere from three quarters of a million to a million dollars for that piece of equipment. Um, there have been lots of discussions about what to do, and frankly, I suspect before the summer's over, we're gonna come back with some amendments to the ordinance to try to talk about it. how do we fix these problems, because all of the, 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 the our job is, in this, this role of the commission is to serve the police department. That is that is the role of the emergency record part of the ordinance. That is to get the, get the police department, get the streets cleared, and get traffic moving, and that may be more important now than it's ever been. And I don't, I've got two, I've got the, the two C-class record operators side by side, and I think they would both say it's, it's huge to make sure we're getting the streets yeah. clear more now than ever. Would, I'd say both shaky heads. I think that's challenging. And it is challenging. <laughs> input as to say they have arrived there's these these ladies sitting in this office mm -hmm. they're not inputting this this comes from your drivers have an app on their phone yes, that sir. says I've arrived yes sir and they can just hit that app and say I arrived and I say that because my drivers do the same thing and, and even though our numbers uh, and this is for the Commission's information as well even though our numbers might say that we're 97 percent compliant that's a fudge because uh, when the drivers know they're going to be late or the drivers know that they're not going to meet that window they open that app and hit arrive and it says that they're there now the only thing that we have is that the, the trucks are GPS and drop a breadcrumb as to where they say they arrive but this would not actually specify where that breadcrumb crumb is it just specifies when they say I've arrived and if the drivers have that capability this could be very false we also have GPS on our trucks as well and if I had specifics I could go through the cook the breadcrumbs and um, you know it, it drops a breadcrumb every 60 seconds I think so right a lot of breadcrumbs throughout the year I have a couple questions yes sir below the number of calls and the average meeting you've got average difference of ride time versus ETA I guess that's estimated time of arrival yes sir for Metro tow pro minus 20 what is that what am, what's that telling me that we're beating the ETA by 20 minutes all right this is your average yes sir of that 30 minutes you're beating it by 20 minutes you're saying okay now tow pro only has uh, just 
from all the way Several, up. Yeah. yeah. It, it's obvious that cotton's got the biggest cotton's and apicot time yep. issues here. Yes, sir. My next thing is this, this is giving me information from February 27th, 2019 to February 26th, 2020, right? Yes, sir. For the year. Now, when I look at average elas elapsed time, and it's been a little while since I've done statistics, but that's taken a number, of, a bunch of numbers, and then coming to an average. Yes, sir. And you're coming up in cottons at 25 minutes. Yes, sir. All right. To get, and then you got your median, which is when you take all the numbers, you find what's actually not average, but what where where the where the numbers really start falling, kind of right in the median. Yep. Doesn't yes, mean sir. it's the average, but it means this is kind of what the middle number. Yes. Right. And you're you're running close to that 30 minutes in cotton zone. Some days, yes. Uh, well, no, I'm saying you're at, oh, no, your your sure. average is running really up tight to that 30 minutes. Yes, sir. So there's got to be some that are over these numbers in order to get it averaged at 25. There may be minutes. some. I'm yeah, not so, aware of so any. So when he's telling me there's sometimes that they, I mean, one that's one hour and 30 minutes is going to skew this greatly. Yeah. Yes. But there's got to be a number of them that you know because I'm looking at. 43 that day, but I'm looking at a total of over 6,000 calls here. And then looking at AB Colliers, you know, you're pushing up there your average at 26 minutes. So there's got to be some that are going over the 30 minutes. There may be. I'm not aware. Maybe to get well, to the average of 26 and only have a, you know, you're, you're looking at an average of only three minutes below the 30. Uh, again, I, I don't know specifics. I can't tell you, you know. Uh, well, you either I, got, I got a lot of 29s or you're. Uh, I hope that's the case. Yeah, and I hope springs eternal every day, and I hope yes, the thin diet for uh, the, the playing future. I'm just trying to point out. I think you've got some going over the 30 in order to get averages of 26. And I'll be sure to. Again, we're addressing this situation now in house. Yeah. Uh, we're having each dispatcher re-review the ordinance and signing that they have. Drivers have to to get their direct. Uh, well, that, record that may be what. Maybe the best thing that comes out of this today is that everybody's getting an awareness of a situation, including the increased traffic along 65 and 24. And some, and I had one other question, Officer Augustine. Yes, sir. You said last year was a, a record number of uh, fatal, crash. fatal crashes. What was that number? 108. 108. <coughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. The year before, we were about 80. About a 20 percent increase. Huh? Yeah. Wow. And we we are. It's early in the year, but we're pushing. We're 55 percent over our regular schedule. What do you think driving the numbers up? Uh. Uh. It's it's going to be a number, a number of things, but an increased call volume, um, distracted driving, um, officers. Uh, with with the increased call volume in all the precincts, officers are not having the time to enforce um, moving violations. Um, our <coughs> lower manpower could contribute to that, and then there's all kinds of. But to actually put a finger on it, I, there's a number of factors. And can you tell me what areas of Davidson County the the, the greatest increases that are occurring? Um, most of them are along the interstate corridors. Um, so 24 is a major one from Old Victor Boulevard to Riley Parkway. Southeast part of the county. Yes, and that's one of our hot spots that we, uh, the traffic unit has been concentrating on lately. Um, Old, um, 40. Hermitage, Old Victor Boulevard between Lebanon and 40. Um, today we were concentrating on Dickerson Pike between um, I-65 and Trinity Lane, um, and then there's there's places around the city that are that we, we concentrate on that are the major hotspots for injured crashes. Mr. Fields, where do you know when the last time the record zones um, borders were adjusted in Southeast Davidson County? In my memory, in the last eight years, you know, we've not made adjustments. <coughs> the zones, my guess, and I, there's historians out there, but I, I would suspect that the zones probably have not changed a lot. Operators probably have over the, you know, over the uh, the years. And again, 
you know, in, in a situation like this, you know, my goal is always correcting problems, fixing problems. That's, I guess I may have made a career trying to fix things. Uh, if, since I, you know, since I wasn't aware of it, one of the things I think could come out of this is exactly as, as the vice chair mentioned, is recognizing that, that there could be a problem, that there is a problem as an observed problem from the police officer, there, there could be a problem based on statistics. It would make a lot of sense, I think, for us to, uh, and this puts a little pressure on the police department, but let's, especially in this particular area, just as the police department's focusing on their, the, the, the issues related to the, the fatal crashes, let's develop a closer relationship with this emergency record zone and the police department, knowing full well that I'm gonna be, I will wanna meet with, with both sides to talk about it over the next several months and observe and then work with the ECC and say, tell me what's happening out here. Um, again, you know, punishments a, is a, discipline's a funny thing. Uh, it can be given out in a lot of different ways. 50 years ago, there was one kind of punishment. Today, there's a different kind of punishment. What I'd rather see us come away with is an effort, not an effort to fix it. If, if we can't fix it, then clearly you have full authority over that map. You have full authority over the operation of that map, whether you've got 14 zones or you have one zone. You make that decision annually in June. If, if, there, if this issue persists and, you know, if, and again, I, the one thing that I know, I know Mr. Williams well, um, he, he's compliant. He has, he has responded when I've said these are issues, and, and again, I'm not talking about time issues, but just, you know, somebody will call and say, hey, you know, there was a problem with this tow, just like all the emergency companies, they're going to get to the bottom of it, and if they've had an error, they're going to fix it. So what I would, I think we probably should do is say, you know, I can't go back, I don't have those numbers, now we could spend hours getting those, or I could spend whatever time you want me to do getting them. But what I'd rather do is say, let's just see if we can go the next, you know, 60 days or 90 days or whatever and say, let's look, let's see. Let's see if there are any more problems. Now again, I don't want to speak, although I have made a career over speaking for other people too in metropolitan government now that I think about it. I don't want to speak for the two sides, but I don't think there's really any animosity here. I think it's just a matter of we've got a police officer that wants the street cleared. We've got a record company that wants to go clear the street. The question is making sure that they're cooperative and that they're getting it done in 30 minutes. And if not, knowing full well that, hey, I need to get a backup out there right now. I need to, I know I can't get there, so get a backup. And uh, I'm assuming a higher, <coughs> anyway, that, I just want to say, I think fixing it is the critical part here and getting it done. Yes, Mr. Reber. Um, just quickly, I wanted to say something in conclusion. What I was going to say, and it's, it's as Billy does, he stole my thunder, uh, I mean, we'll commit we're going to meet with the precincts in our district in the next 15 days. We're going to go in there. We're going to we're going to talk to him right back there in about three minutes. <laughs> but we're going to go into each district and each precinct if we're in our three zones and have a meeting in the next 15 days and get direct feedback. Um, again, nothing. I don't. There's nothing I like worse than cross-examining a police officer about about the nitpicky whether this complaint's actually a complaint under the statute or not. I don't want to do that. If there's a problem, we will ferret it out and we will fix it. Thank, thank you. I appreciate all y'all do. police is willing to do this in conjunction with um, A.B. Collier, Cottons, and Topro to, you know, for some period of time, Officer Augustine to, you know, when when there are emergency emergencies being responded to, uh, to, to really carefully track that time. Uh, and that's going to give everybody a key set of data to work with. Um, obviously, the the tow companies will be keeping up with that time as well. Uh, but it will actually help us as a commission uh, when we're evaluating whether these zones need to be adjusted. Because uh, that, that's one of the things that jumps out of me as a possible solution is if there are consistent issues where time is, is, is we're running into a problem with time, response time, you know, the, 
then perhaps we need to create either new boundaries for the zone, existing zones, or even just create a totally new zone in the southeast um, that would allow the companies to better respond. Uh, but I don't think we can do that uh, without, you know, having key data. I do think we need to formally decide what we're going to do with the complaint, though, uh, and then, of course, in doing so, we can certainly make a recommendation um, to the parties. Uh, as Mr. Fields says, we're going to be deciding later on this year uh, reapproval of the zones uh, and so perhaps we'll have good data by then to make some decisions well I think in this case there is um, there's obviously uh, some form of an issue uh, the officer I'm sure would not be wasting his valuable time and neither would you guys there's some uh, logistics data here that points the obvious. If it's, if it's not perfect, then there are times just math, simple mathematics. If you're not at the perfect 30 minutes or under it, uh, that, that means you are missing some. You know, the higher the volume of the calls that you take, the more you can miss. The averages, you know, thin out the, big, the larger the number the more times you can miss that 30 minute window and your average still stay, stay high. That's simple math. The numbers show that there, there are some being missed here. Again, I agree with Billy that it's this commission's obligation and duty uh, not uh, just to pass down judgment, but, but obviously to fix a problem. Um, suspending or, or putting someone out, out of business or changing a zone at this point I think would create uh, a bigger issue than it would fix. Uh, all parties here concerned seem to be willing uh, to resolve the issue. I personally think from having trucks on the road myself uh, that it's just an issue of volume and that uh, the, the maybe un, while, the ex while the equipment is obviously expensive uh, to keep up with the volume in the zones that are there I just simply think th there needs to be more trucks. Um, uh, that's just, the, I mean, that's an obvious fix. Uh, the more people we have on the street, the higher the number of incidences, the more trucks we're going to need to be in service to tow. Again, these are half million, you know, these aren't the little snatch and grabs that tow these uh, a lot of these big vehicles, they're, they're expensive, I realize that, but uh, this, we do have to, we are here to make a, a, a solution, and I think it, at this point, we're not going to be able to reach it, uh, again, with n not having enough specific data from you on calls, and actually not having, even though you did provide us with uh, data. The data just shows a large volume with no specifics. So it would be my suggestion, and if I might make a motion uh, to to postpone this to uh, be brought back up with more information at our is it our June meeting that we uh, consider re rezoning. The June meeting is an annual meeting for consideration. The ordinance requires that each year you review it. You could certainly hold this information as a part of your discussion in June and again if we were if you're saying we could monitor between now and then and report back in June yes and we can do that with all the zones in fact just go and commit to that we'll just we'll add, we'll add run whatever reports ECC can run I'll meet back with them they're very cooperative and have a new director we'll meet with them and see what information we can provide um, so we'd like to deal with your I hear what you're saying, but I think you can get us some information oh, sure. to make an intelligent decision. And with all due respect, Officer Augustine, you've got anecdotal evidence of what you have been experiencing and other officers have been experiencing. And I'm assuming it's correct when I was told by counsel that the only requirement is that the identification be on the door. Yep. Ordinance okay. says doors. It doesn't mention anything else. Uh, and again, I 
appreciate your service, and with all due respect, I think under the facts we have before us today with this complaint that's been pending since October 28th, I would make a motion to dismiss it, but encourage that we get this information and data to us to start making intelligent decisions. And I'm relying upon Mr. Weaver's assertion, a statement today that they are going to be meeting within the next 15 days with all the precincts. I hope also with Officer Augenstein, uh, that would make me feel better about putting forth this motion to dismiss this complaint today. I just want to, I just want, I just want to fix whatever solution we can come up with with between the police department and the records. And I, I think mean, it's, it, and it's, every company has their issues, I understand that. It's just like when I'm out enforcing traffic on Briley Parkway, everybody's speeding, but there's always those that are a little bit higher than everybody <laughs> else. So I kind of go off of an average. So it's based on call volume that to the emergency records, that's why this complaint's and there's a public policy here too. We want to make sure that officers are not just sitting on the, on the side of the interstates waiting for tow trucks to show up. And I am certain that the drivers would be able to tell us that there are traffic issues involved as well. So um, I can only imagine when there's been an accident, a fatal accident especially, and the line of traffic they've got to figure out how to get over and get around to get there in time. So Anyway, that's my motion that we could dismiss the October 28, 2019 complaint by Officer Augustine with the promises they've been made to work towards a solution here today. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any nays? Can I just ask a question? I'm just curious from my own knowledge. Mr. Weaver raised the procedural defects with the complaint. Are those, is this in fact not actionable because there's no, must have been filed within 30 days prior to the, well, I'm sorry, 30, must have 30, they, they would have had it, they would have had it filed. The filing date may not be as the greater issue. The, the greater issue would have been the document that, again, I'm assuming was destroyed in the file. I mean, typically what would happen if, if, if a citizen comes in and says, I've got a complaint, we're going to say, what are you complaining about? And if, and in fact, I've, I hand them back to them that it's not a complaint because you don't, you don't know what you're complaining about. It's not a violation because it's not in the ordinance. In this particular case, the officer said he had it. I don't doubt that. I just can't produce it. And I apologize for that. We had that same problem in an earlier meeting of a document that just doesn't exist in terms of our files because of that fire. Um, can I just say one thing? Go ahead. Do that. So um, I, I agree with everyone, everything everyone else said in terms of um, I'm really happy to see you all willing to work together on this. That having I, I may have said this on a previous meeting, but having ridden with the South Precinct in particular, I know just how strapped they are in terms of personnel. And you know, getting to the end of a of a midnight shift. 7 a.m. with still, you know, 30 calls still waiting that haven't even been gotten to, some of which are welfare checks, some of which are, you know, um, minor robberies, whatever. I don't know if there's such thing as a minor robbery, but um, it's really distressing to see the, the shorthandedness. So um, I don't think it's a question, Mr. Williams, of us trying to say 30 minutes, but we really do need to make sure that we're serving the purpose of, of being able to get our officers moving. Um, so I appreciate your efforts. All right. Um, just for purposes of clarity, all those in favor of Mr. McNally's motion? Aye. 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 Any nays? Motion passes. Uh, Officer Augustine, I, I will add that uh, you certainly are free to file another TLC complaint um, at a later period of time if there are new instances where um, the three companies here have been late beyond 30 minutes. But I would um, urge you to, you know, put as much specificity as possible, bring the logs, you know, with the time stamps, all of that showing, you know, which instances we're talking about. And that will allow us to better address the, that complaint then. Hopefully, um, though, uh, between you and Mr. We Weaver and Mr. Williams and the police department, there can be some improvement. So. And it, I, I, it does not affect me either way if you dismiss it or whatever, but at least 
it's been brought to your attention. So that's that was at least done. So thank you very done. much. Next item on our agenda is also under Wrecker and Towing Services. We've been asked to review uh, the renewal of a non-consent application and a change of address for Copeland's Towing Impound Lot. Uh, also included with that renewal request was a staff report on Copeland Towing uh, uh, Copeland Towing's violation that was found by one of our inspectors. Nine Kids Towing, as you know, is uh, uh, treated uh, differently than general wrecker services. Nine Kids Towing has a has a very high level of of uh, oversight and regulation as compared to general wreckers. Not as high as emergency, but very very close. So anytime a in, anytime an impound lot is moved, we require the company to uh, file application, appear in front of the commission, and allow you to approve it. Um, in this situation, we actually had about three things that happened all at about the same time. We had uh, the renewal period was in December, and uh, we didn't get renewed on time. So we believe you need to renew it. We don't have an, we have no objection for the renewal. We also would like for you to approve a lot that now has been uh, it's been inspected. It has the appropriate UNO uh, uh, UNO issue. The inspector it, it, on the first uh, the first uh, sweep. It did not pass inspection. I think uh, uh, Inspector Morris had some issues with the lot. You made those corrections. Correct. And so the lot then was in order. Um, there was also an issue of a truck that uh, was a, a new truck that had uh, that may have gone into service prior to an inspection and, uh, and proper licensing. Again, there may have also been a miscommunication there. So I was kind of having not been there presently we just wanted I thought it made sense to have Mr. Copeland be present um, to uh, to answer you know again a couple of questions one why didn't you come in in December and uh, and then two is just you know has the record issue been resolved in other words why was it there and, and is it, it I think since then it's been inspected and and it's now in service yeah it's removed it's out of service in That's other words did that particular I'm sorry, I'm not trying to hold a hearing for the commission. Matt, would you mind if I ask him a couple of questions? Has, I know the lot has been, that we've gotten that worked out. As far as the record itself, the, the record that you had, has it now been lettered and is it in service? Correct. Okay, so it was inspected and... Correct. And, which is why I think we've got the application and I think we've got everything done there. Yeah, I turned up. I think the biggest thing I wanted to be able to do, and this sounds, I guess it, I, I shouldn't, indulge or, or shouldn't ask for this indulgence but I want to make sure that he, he and we've got a seven, another application that did not come in on time it's critical that it come in on time because there's two things there one there's a period of time where you can't work until that application is approved and number two it takes time for this commission to have to have this hearing whether it's five minutes or 30 minutes correct and as you well know when we have to use their time it's 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 time as volunteers so I can't this is me fussing and I don't fuss a lot, but it is critical that before next December 1st, you complete the application and be in the office. Yes, sir. With the rest of it, he was very cooperative. I worked with him some on the lot. He was very cooperative on that. And the conversations mm -hmm. I've had with him on the record, he understood the importance of make sure when he gets that piece of equipment in, as soon as he can, have it licensed, I mean, get all the tags, get everything done, and then for our inspectors to see it first. Or bring it to me and I'll inspect it myself. That particular issue that was in there, there was another wrecker, there was another wrecker on the lot. Correct. And it was not his wrecker, and you're, you're not supposed to have other wrecker, if you're doing non-consent towing, uh, you're not supposed to have other wreckers lodged on there. It was a belief of the inspector that that wrecker was actually working out of the lot. Mr. Copeland assured me that that wrecker was not working out of the lot, it was just on the lot being stored. Yes, yes, it being stored at the time. He was out of the country, and now he's back in, and I've had him remove the truck. Because I told him I was going to take possession of it yeah. if he didn't. So the truck has been removed now. So yeah. if you want to send in Mr. Morrison out to yeah. double check. For a minute there, I was prosecuting and defending all at the same time. I'm going to shut up. Oh, I'm not jury. <laughs> <laughs>
it's my belief everything's in compliance. Oh, just one question. Why didn't you get your renewal on time? Uh, just with the towing, you know, it's just, it's next yeah, next year, I, I'll, I'll, I do apologize, I'm sorry, and next year I promise it'll probably be, I will be early next year. Definitely. <laughs> I'll probably be one of the first. It's just towing, it's, it's a full-time job. I've done it 25 years, and it's, it takes a toll on you. You ever been late over the 25 years on the renewal? Um, not that I know of. I, I'm, I try to stay on top of it. I know it's, it's a priority, so. I don't recall them being late. I, again, the emergencies and the non-consents, they, they, they have more riding on it because the generals, is, is, so they have to, they have to come in again and do this sort of thing. So they are, they're typically on time. And the other side of, well, there, there are very few, there are relatively few non-consents. So we're going to have conversations with them too. If I, if I know they're not in, I'm going to give a call and say, hey, you need to be in. And that's whether that's coddling them or, or uh, holding their hand or whatever. Again, our goal is to get the service in the county. So whatever it takes, we want to do the same thing. In the interest of time, I'll make a motion to renew, to grant the renewal of open towing in town. And Thank also you. to recognize the change of address. Oh, and approve the change of address for Thank the you. lot. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Thanks. Motion passes. Thank you. We also have a renewal request for non-consent from Lightning Towing. Mr. Fields. Josh, <coughs> we have the owner come up. And uh, we, the only issue we have here, um, we have a, uh, if you'll recall, year, last year, year before last, he had made a move. His, his lot was moved over to uh, uh, Lebanon Road, so the, uh, you, that was taken care of. He failed to renew on time. We had a discussion about it. When these are permits that are year to year, so anytime they aren't renewed, then we, they would fail. So he's asking that it would be reinstated. We have no objection for the reinstatement. You know, we had no complaints last year. As far as I know, he's been in compliance. And the only reason why he's before us then is he was just late submitting his application. I would fuss at him, but again, I'm going to try to not talk so much. I'm surprised you're not imposing a fine if, if you were able to do that for being late. Well, one of the it's 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 interesting you would say that. One of the things you will very likely see, I hope, when we have a rewrite and we've legal and I've talked about it, is that we would actually because currently there's the only thing it is it just ends. Yeah. What we'd like to do is impose a uh, you know at codes if you do something like this we're going to triple well triple fee you. So if your application fee is five hundred dollars, you don't renew on time, we're going to triple fee you to fifteen hundred dollars. And we would actually recommend that to be in the law. It's not in the law today. We don't really have any. There's, there's, there's nothing that would allow us to do it today. But we would, in the future, we might, would very much, you know, lean on a, on another department. And, and I can assure you, they do not want me to have their any more money than I already take. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve lightning towing renewal. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. We also have record driver applications. Uh, we have three, Johnny Ray Clark Jr., Stephen Lamont Hunter, and Carlos Barroso. I don't think Mr. Clark is going to be here. I understand he's taking a job outside the industry. Mr. Clark, so we would withdraw that. And uh, Mr. Hunter and Mr. Barroso. Stephen Lamont Hunter, he's present. Mr. Barroso. We're also eight present. So they're both present and ready to uh, respond. All right, Mr. Hunter. So, Mr. Fields, what was uh, what was noticeably um, apparent with Mr. Hunter's app uh, application to have him come before in, us? In making his application, he, uh, is, he, I believe he was truthful in terms of giving us information. Uh, and, however, just because the concern the commission would have, uh, in, in 2018 there was issue of, uh, there were some charges. They were uh, all dismissed uh, down to ending up with a reckless endangerment with no weapon, but it was a misdemeanor. If it were reckless, if it were felony reckless endangerment, he would not be qualified. 
but because he was only found guilty of a reckless endangerment uh, as a misdemeanor, I just wanted you to have an opportunity to review his application. Again, some things that you've asked me to improve and to bring to the commission, that felt like one that you'd want to look at. But otherwise, he's quite, there, there is nothing that prohibits him from being a driver. Well, I have one quick question that I know that Ms. Curtis is going to say she's closed it out, but for instance, have you read the Metropolitan Ordinance Record and Towing Services and the Commission Rules related to record services? You circled no. Yes, that's when I first passed it in, and the lady at the window, she gave me a copy of it and said, so when you come back, you can circle it, yes, and we forgot to address that. Did not that. read that? Because mm, I actually <laughs> called instead of coming back up there, so okay. yes, I've read it. So, Mr. Hunter, it looks like on April 6th, you were arrested and charged with the open container violation, driving under the influence, uh, possession of a weapon while under influence, and then reckless endangerment, is that right? That's the one he said all the charges were dismissed except for the reckless endangerment. I was actually uh, with someone else and they actually had a weapon. Okay. Were you driving? Yes, sir. That e or after or the, it was, that day, it was uh, it was his automobile. Okay. But I was driving. what was noticeable, I think what was really noticeable was the last issue that we were aware of was in 2000 and then this issue in 2018, so it was an 18-year period. Right. Have you had an accident no, while you were driving? Was no, ma'am. Um, those other accidents was uh, someone had hit my car and ran. That was, I was, uh, uh, I have a, a delivery service. To, and uh, someone had hit my van on the route. I made a report, but I never did follow up on it. And on the other one, I actually, there was a guy parked on my street. He was doing uh, lawn care, and I kind of bumped into his trailer, and he made a big deal out of it, so. So you got 11 months, 29 days suspended sentence on the reckless endangerment? Yeah, probation, yes, sir. Okay. And if I'm saying this correctly, you were arrested for driving under the influence, open container, and possession of a weapon while under the influence. Just arrested for that. Yes, sir. Those charges were dismissed. Yes, sir. So what are the facts that led to your reckless endangerment conviction, your guilty plea? I was, um, like I said, I was with a friend, and uh, we had went out to a couple of spots, and really, when it was time to go home, he really didn't look safe to drive, so I made the mistake of figuring that I could drive, and, um, but I had been drinking as well, and the officer pulled me over because I was driving slow and I didn't have the headlights on. So they reduced your driving under the influence to reckless driving? Reckless endangerment. Reckless endangerment. Yes, sir. All right, so what was your breath alcohol reading? I don't remember. Well. Above 0.10, above 0.08, 0.3. It was past the, it wasn't like that, okay. but it was over the legal limit. All right, so it was above 0.08. Yes, sir. All right, and then through a plea bargain, did you have a lawyer? Yes, sir. All right, so your attorney through plea bargaining reduced the driving under the influence charge down to reckless endangerment. Yes, sir. All right, so you must have gotten a fine, I guess, as well? Yes, sir and probably ordered to go to alcohol safety school? No, sir. No? 
Yeah, yeah, I did go to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what about the Mothers Against Drunk Driving class, uh, program or anything? I had to do some uh, community service work. Okay. And how much of that have you completed? I've completed. I've Everything. satisfied all my obligations. And you're off probation? Yes, sir. And you had a driving un a driving while impaired back in 89, right? Um, no, I think that was uh, 08. Okay. But you had a previous driving, alcohol-related driving conviction. Yeah, just the one in 08. 89, I think that was something else. I was now you got two, about 19 in 89. Okay. So you got one back then, and then you got one in eight, two, 2018. Yes, sir. And uh, when I was in court, the uh, judge brought that up, but he said since it was uh, so long ago and I've been Mm -hmm. Smooth sailing since then, that he wouldn't charge me with a DUI two or something like that. I'm not sure. DUI second sentence. Okay. My concern is, how am I going to be sure that you're not going to be drinking and driving again? No, I'm not going to do that. I, I I know I made a mistake, and next time I'll be losing my license and going to jail. Well, you're here for a record driver <coughs> application. Yes, sir. And I'm concerned about you drinking and. and on the job or working? No, I don't do that. I actually have two jobs now the way I drive. In the mornings, I have, like I said, my delivery company, and I uh, subcontract on a <coughs> pharmaceutical company and deliver prescriptions to pharmacies and hospitals. And on my second job, I uh, work for medic transportation to where I work with wheelchair people, take them to their doctor's appointments and everything like that. So, I'm obviously trusted for driving people and staying on a straight and narrow. And both of these companies does background checks and they are aware of that. Yeah, but when they do a background check, all they see is that you had a long time ago of a driving while impaired and you have a reckless endangerment. They don't have the opportunity to sit there and realize that it was a DUI reduced down to reckless endangerment through negotiation, like we just went through just now. Yes, sir. Any time, don't worry. Are they here? Are they here? Yes, sir. Okay. Hi. How you doing? Can you introduce yourself? Uh, my name is Jeff Boone. I'm the owner of Anytime Towing. Do you have ways of making sure that person doesn't operate the towing, the, the record? Yes, sir. Influence yes, now? sir. Yeah, this was like, uh, I've been knowing him like 40 years. We used to, uh, his dad owned like 50 or 60 houses. We used to just work for his dad. And, you know, he always been a good guy. Straight on, always been on the straight and narrow. You know, he, I see he had made a mistake. And, you know, I feel confident in him that he can, you know, get himself back up and get going. You know, every time, you know, I send somebody down here to get a permit, they go to work for dads or everybody else. So. You know, this was my first time just, you know, sticking my neck out for uh, Steve. He's a good guy. Always been a, you know, cut hair, always had different business, you know. You know, I want to just, you know, I stick my neck out for him. You weren't the guy he was driving for that night, were you? No, no, I don't <laughs> eat drink. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. I don't do nothing. I'm a vegetarian, you know, I'm a vegetarian. Yeah, yeah I don't, I'm a vegetarian, I don't do nothing. Do you have a way of testing your drivers and ensure they're not uh, under the influence of drugs or alcohol yeah. while they're working? Yeah, I got a, I mean, I can you know, get up on him and smell him and, yeah, you know, yeah, from, yeah, yeah, from now on, I was like, yeah, I was just trying to smell his breath and everything, you know, and if I feel like, you know, something wrong, you know, I would send him to go get a, you know, 
go get uh, checked out, you know. I mean, you know, I, he always been, he always been a good guy, always been a good guy. So, you know, I just, you know what I'm saying, I'm putting for him, you know, he got, you know, he drives, I see him all the time driving, you know, and, you know, he just wanted, you know, try to, you know, start something different. <clears throat> Mr. Hunter, as I recall, being on General Sessions probation, you're required to refrain from alcohol for that year, aren't you? Yes. It and was uh, six months. Your reckless endangerment was only oh, six months not to refrain not from refrain, alcohol, yes. but probation for six for 1129. Yes. How'd you do on that six months? I, I did uh, My uh, probation officer was uh, Joe Gray. Uh -huh. And, you know, let you know, he, he got to the point where he said, you don't even have to just worry about this. Call, just call me every night and then let me know you're all right. Okay. Um, how many drivers do you have for your company? Two. Two. And so with Mr. Hunter, there, you'd have three? Yes, sir. You normally, before he goes out on the call, would you be sending him out directly? In other words, he'd be in an office, and you'd say, "Go to so, go to a certain address." So you'd actually see him before he goes out on the yeah, call. Yeah, would be, you know, often, you know, he he don't even know how to talk. I would just, you know, we just going from the grass root up. You know what I'm saying? As far as friends, you know, I you know I would just bring him in and you know and show him the ropes. You know, I know he know how to drive. I went to Dixon and told his delivery trucks and stuff like that. But I want to just show him, you know, from the grassroots all the way up. So I would be holding his hand the whole time. So, you know, if anything ever, like, go this way or that way, you know, it's going to be like, uh, it ain't going to work. You know, I'm not finna, I'm not finna just put my neck out, you know what I'm saying? And just, if I know somebody, if, if you're right, you're right, you're wrong, you're wrong. So, you know, I would, you know, I would take my time and, and, you know, just show them how to do things and how to get from point A to point B. But, yeah, I would be smelling his breath and everything else, <laughs> you know. Well, we only we only check records uh, typically every every five years. By the same token, if you want to put a period of time, there's other checks we can do. And two, uh, two? I'm sorry, two years. They when they renew cab drivers or they're, they're five. But if there's another violation, you have an obligation to advise Mr. Fields. Right? Yes, sir. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Fields, if Mr. Lamont, excuse me, Mr. Hunter had actually received a DUI and had been convicted of a DUI uh, in 2018, would his application be before us? No, no, sir. You're prohibited for a three-year period. If it's an accident, it's fine. I think that um, we as a commission, while I understand Mr. Hunter's uh, desire to get an application and I commend him for uh, the way he's handled himself before us today as well as since his conviction for reckless endangerment. Um, I still can't get beyond the fact that you were in fact driving under the influence on April 6, 2018 even though you weren't convicted. You admitted to us today that you were above the legal limit and um, I don't think we should grant your application. I don't get to make a motion, though, but that's just my, how I'm coming down on the, the application. 
a great opportunity for my family and future. And I can promise the commission that there'll be nothing like that for the future moving forward. Whether if I'm driving for uh, the tow company or my personal vehicle, that, that has never been an issue since then because I've learned my lesson. I went through a lot. It cost me a lot of money. Well, I, I'm inclined to give you an opportunity, um, just speaking for myself, I'm inclined to give you an opportunity to, to prove that. I think you're very, you appear to be very sincere. And th this is a very, your record is unfortunate in, in this regard. Um, so, it, so April's not quite a year ago. Um, have you, have you, I mean, do you still drink? Do you um, I uh, no longer go to clubs and stuff like that. And I've had some cocktails at home, Super Bowl party, stuff like that. <laughs> You understand that, and I, I can't speak for anyone else, but you understand that if you're approved and you have another incident, it's not going to be good for you. Uh, you had been off probation April of last year, right? Uh, April of 2019. Actually, it was June. Yeah, they let you off early. No. Oh, uh, June of 2019? Yeah. Oh. Because I actually went to court in June. It was oh, out okay. April. Yeah. So the probation started from the court. All right. So you had, the incident was April of 2018. You went to court June of 2018. You got your disposition. And you got off probation June of 2019. Yes, sir. And the probation officer was satisfied with my... Uh, everything I was supposed to do to where I didn't even have to go back to court. I apologize. What's, what's your name? Jeff. What's Jeff you? Bone. Bone? Yes, sir. Miss Bone. Sounds like uh, at your establishment it's the sniff test for determining whether somebody's drinking or not. Would would it be a way of setting up to where there's, he could be required every week or every two weeks, at least at the beginning, to go get it, an alcohol test? Yes, sir. Because the problem with alcohol is, after so many hours, it's out of the system. Yes, sir. And my other concern is, if you have cocktails at home the day before and then come into work the next day, you may still, while not be under the influence, have some impairment, depending on how much you drink. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if y'all if y'all approve, if y'all approve, Mr. Steve Hunter, I would have to adjust to that because he's like a his daddy, you know, played a big a big part in my life, and whatever I got to do to make make it work, I, I would have to make it work, you know. Like I say, I ain't I ain't never known him to do anything, you know, but work. So. Wondering about an interlock device on, this, on your record. That, that's asking an awful lot of you. <laughs> well, you laugh, but they're putting them on. Uh, they're putting them on vehicles. So yeah. People have drivers. I already them. know. <laughs> Hang on. Just. There are very simple devices nowadays that that you can buy for less than fifty dollars that you actually can attach to this phone and it has a little straw on it. You can blow into it and it'll tell you blood. If y'all want me to do it, I do it. No, I ain't got no problem doing what y'all want me to do. If y'all want me to do it, I Well, I you have to realize no this this commission is here for for yeah. public safety. Yeah, I understand. I understand. And, and, you know, I understand. and there are many lives that have been lost yes, sir. under under DUIs and so when we see that in in the very recent past we have to put some very serious uh, consideration on that. Uh, while I'm inclined to agree with you to to give him that chance, uh, 
to to go ahead and uh, and start a new career with you, and and I commend you for uh, for sticking your neck out, as you put it, to yeah. to, to give him that chance. We uh, would not like to see on the news or see before us, uh, you know, six months from now where someone yes, has uh, lost their life behind this. So I would like to make a motion, uh, and I don't know how we would, Billy, how your office would possibly handle verifying uh, that there has been a, a uh, an alcohol test. Uh, perform, but um, is there? We, depending on what kind of a test is the the, the as Mr. McNally, we, well as y'all were talking about a, a, a device. Obviously, if the owner of the company bought a device and did testing and reporting back to the commission weekly or daily or whatever, again, if I, I assume you test on command with one of those machines that you're describing. I've not seen one. Uh, if you want formal testing, then you, it's different than the alcohol test. It's much cheaper. It would just we'd have to have it at a laboratory, and that could be a random one that that he has to go to, you know, every month or or two weeks or six weeks or whatever. So it's just, it would depend if we wanted. To, I put a lot of faith in company owners, and maybe I should, you know, I I think I think companies have so much that's. You know, if you decide he's not going to be in the record business, for instance, if he violates, if you tell him to do something and he doesn't, if you decide he's not in the business, he can't run a record in this town. And when you, you've got a piece of equipment sitting in your yard and you can't run it, that's, that's a big deal. If you wanted him to be able to do the testing, I feel comfortable with that. If you want to go to a lab, I'm going to feel comfortable with that. So I think it's just a matter of what direction the commission, from a policy standpoint, how you feel about it. How many trucks do you have? Three. Three. And there's no way to designate. <coughs> I mean, three trucks, three drivers. Right. Is there any way to designate a particular driver to a particular truck? Yes, sir. There is. Yeah. Just give them, just give them a truck, and that'd be his truck. But what I would do but is. But it would be at your facility. It wouldn't be yeah. open. Yes, sir. Okay. And what I do is, you know, I probably would put a breath glass in the truck or, you know, I mean, just whatever would well, be comfortable with you. I wonder what? if an interlock device or interlock company would put an interlock device <coughs> on the truck that he was, that Mr. Uh, Hunter. Mr. Hunter is going to be driving. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't have no problem doing that, you know. You know, it might be something that might be a thing of the future, you know. I'm just, you know. I wouldn't have no problem. I'm not looking to expand it, but <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, you know, I, I tore a lot of interlock cars that be had to, you know, take it to the shop to get them recalibrated. Mm -hmm. It'd be a lot of them, you know, that, that you just got to just take them back and forth to get them recalibrated. And uh, I ain't got no problem doing that. I don't know. He might not even, you know, he, you know, the torn, the torn bid, the torn industry is so tough now, you know. Just like earlier when when y'all was talking uh, with a uh, tow pro, was it tow pro another guy? Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, officer. Back in the day, you could get out. You can come. You can leave from here and get to Antioch in 15 minutes. After two o'clock, it's like 45 minutes mm -hmm. going from downtown to Antioch. So you know things change. You know it's hard to get around town now. You know with all this, with all the people moving in. But uh, I'm ready to work, you know, going forward. You know, Mr. Uh, Hunter and the record and the, uh, the license commission, I'm ready to go forward. I'm new. Just doing a quick search, an interlock device costs approximately $70 to $150 to install and runs $250 to $350 a day for monitoring. Yeah, about $70. Is that? Yeah, and that's it's it's a sixty to eighty dollars a month. And some of them will waive uh, having. No, I'm sorry, seventy. No, yeah, sixty to eighty dollars a month. <coughs> and that if you go to the lab. Oh, it'd be more expensive. The lab would be more expensive. I mean, and this, 
We've not done this in the past, but this would be a pretty comprehensive. If we're sure he's the only wrecker, he can't start it unless he can. If it, you know, I'm not that familiar with the equipment. And then but periodically, he has to follow in there if he keeps the thing running. My only concern for Mr. Bone is once in a while they have to be. Well, you just have to drive him back in to have him recalibrate. We don't only have him three trucks. That that might actually put a crunch on him. But I respect the commissioners uh, or the, you know, the instinct that people have here. So, is there a simpler way, like a P bed or something? Or? No. No. <laughs> um, I would. I am inclined to. To, to put this in, I mean, this is Mr. Boone's business. And like he said, he's willing to stick his neck out here. Uh, I would be inclined to, uh, to, to, to put this obligation on Mr. Boone and to for, provide him to show a burden of proof in the, in, in the next six months that he has randomly tested Mr. Hunter and that uh, he has he has passed an alcohol test, even though if the outside lab test might be more expensive um, <clears throat> than actually having a device put on one of the trucks that would necessarily uh, probably cause a little bit more inconvenience uh, for, for, for Mr. Boone than Mr. Hunter. So. Um, I would like to make a motion to approve uh, Mr. Hunter uh, and within the next six months have Mr. Boone show proof of at least three random alcohol tests um, back to Mr. Fields showing that uh, Mr. Hunter was indeed uh, tested and that it did come back that uh, his blood alcohol levels were in normal range. Second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And he can do. Can, he can do those any way he wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, Freddie, the, did you intend for those to be random, like in surprise tests? Yes. Yes, I, I, I did not say random. I think you did. did. Yeah. So, Mr. Boone, you did understand what what uh, the council was asking of you. Yes, sir. That that in three months you provide. I mean, in the next six months you you provide at least three random alcohol tests and and the results of those tests to Mr. Fields' office. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the application of Carlos Barroso for driver application. Yes. Vote. Good afternoon. In making his application, there were two items that he failed to uh, to disclose to us. One was a um, uh, contributed to a delinquent of a minor in uh, 1999, and the other was uh, failed to tell us about a, an assault. Uh, in 1993. Otherwise, he would be qualified. He, he'd be working uh, with uh, West Nashville. Mr. Mitchell is still here to, uh, is still present. Mr. Barroso, how old were you in 1999? I believe, to the best of my recollection, I was 27, 26, something to that area. Down in Cleveland? Yes, sir. What brought you to Nashville? Well, uh, you know, the Lord moves in mysterious ways, and uh, the, the operations manager for West Nashville saw my resume, and uh, I was working for Vocker Chemical as a chemical process operator, and I was looking to relocate to the greater Nashville area with my family. So uh, I received the call, interviewed for the position, and here I am. 
to what was the nature of the offense of statutory rape? Well, uh, at the time, I was working at an auto dealership, and you know, my mom always said, "Be a gentleman. You know, treat a lady like a lady." And this young lady was stranded on the side of the road, and I stopped, and the car was broke down, and I offered my assistance. Well, uh, you know, we struck up a great conversation, and she was really friendly, and she liked the way I was, and you know, I was young, and you know, single, and so we, you know, one thing led to another, and well, c come to find out she was 17. And uh, there were some other things along with that story that metastasized into something a lot greater that changed my future forever. So, uh, well, needless to say, it did change my life for the better. So, uh, if you'd like, I could elaborate. Um, the young. Well, uh, at the time, there were two detectives assigned to the case, and one was a lady, one was a gentleman, and the lady asked me the set of questions first. Well, uh, about eight days later, I went back in because the male detective wanted to ask me a set of questions. And they were the same questions, but they seemed to be worded slightly different, but they sounded the same to me, so I answered, but to my demise, it was, uh, I perjured myself. And so it was something really simplistic, but uh, very detrimental to my, my, to my record, so. Why didn't you report that when you announced the, uh, the uh, Well, to be honest with you, um, my position at West Nashville, I'm the hazmat supervisor, so my job entails something totally different. And I was never really assigned to drive a record because it just wasn't something appealing. I was in the chemical field. But Mr. Mitchell has uh, a lot going on with this company. So when we first initially met for the interview, uh, I was supposed to have other people that would be able to drive for me. But as you can see before you, Tow Pro and I believe it's Mr. Douglas, they, they're stretched thin as it is taking care of our city. You know, So um, unfortunately, there's not always someone available at 3 a.m. to drive a wrecker to respond to my calls. So um, I handle all the billing, invoicing, emailing, contact with the clients, uh, everything for the hazmat side of the company. But I wanted to be, I wanted to offer that opportunity to Mr. Mitchell for extending me the opportunity at the job. So if I can drive a record for him at three in the morning, he doesn't have to dig into his pocket to pay someone else when he's already paying me a salary to do my job. So if I have a class A CDL and I wanted to be able to offer that opportunity to help him as he's helped me. So. Mr. Fields, I'm looking at the application. Is, is the perjury, the words up there in the top yeah. right corner, is that the perjury part? I, I believe that was the perjury part okay. where he did, he did Actually, reveal that, and it's in process of expungement. Okay. He failed to list uh, the delinquency, and then there was an assault in 90, yeah. Um, 93. 93. Yeah. So, so my question about why he didn't list the perjury is not appropriate because he's got the, it is listed up there. Right? Yes, okay. sir. It's not, it's just not on the line. But we don't have the statutory rape and the contributing to the minor and the assault charge mm -hmm. listed. If I may add to that, that, that's still in question. Um, it was supposed to be expunged off my record, but I don't know if you're aware, but you know how Nashville has the 100-year flood? Well, uh, Chattanooga had a very detrimental flood as well, and all of downtown Chattanooga was impacted by this tremendous flood four feet underwater. Well, at least well this application says include even expungements. Yes, sir. Uh, but according to the attorney that I hired at the time, I wasn't really at liberty to just tell anybody because my the companies that I've worked for were Fortune 500 companies. So it wasn't anything that I ever had to really divulge because there was a process in place. Uh, but due to that flood, a lot of my documentation was destroyed. And kind of like the gentleman depicted about the fire, sometimes some documentation you just can't provide any longer. So it's kind of eliminated that opportunity for me. But um, with this, I wasn't really aware of how in depth I had to go f you know, so far back. And I believe it said later, uh, when the lady read it to me, 
that I had to stay up to, I think, the age of 16. But to be honest with you, I'm, you know, I'm a father of five kids and a grandbaby and a busy job. <laughs> and it's hard to remember everything. And so I apologize for wasting your time, so to speak, to, to appear to re respond to this. But Well, I, I don't think it's wasting time for us to be aware of the fact that you, while being a giving assistance to a 17-year-old or had uh, evolved into a relationship with her would end up in criminal charges that we should have seen on this application. Yes, sir. You're 100% correct. And I apologize. And in 91, you, were char you had traffic offenses and it looks here as public order crimes. What's that about? Public order crimes? 1990, August 25, 1991, Carlos Alberto Barroso, Bradley County, and it says here, traffic offenses, suspended license. Well, and that, I don't, is that on your uh, application? No, sir. Um, I believe there was a, to the best of my understanding and, and recollection, I was supposed to pay a ticket, and there was a miscommunication between the date it was supposed to be paid and the filing by the clerk, and, well, it led to my license being uh, either suspended. I, I don't really recall all the details, but... It, it was just a minute thing that led to that. I had to pay for reinstatement, and that was pretty much it. But um, what's the charge of assault in 1993 about? I was defending my best friend, and his aunt. Uh, well, she, it was like a step aunt, and she became inebriated and was fighting over a watch. It was something trivial, something that. Her son let my best friend borrow this watch, and it became this issue. And she came and assaulted my friend, started hitting him. So I kind of jumped in the middle to defend him. And when I swung to kind of push her away, I hit her, and, well, it got filed on me as an assault charge. He was a minor at the time, but he was my best friend. So what, what do you do? You, you step in to help your friend. <laughs> and, well, it, that comes back and bites you. In 2011, you had a violation of probation. What did you do to violate your probation? That one, sir, to be honest with you, I have no idea about that because when, when I went through this situation, uh, I came and saw the gentleman. I guess he was a probation officer. I showed up for every appointment, and I believe you had to pay, like, a, at the time, it was like $45 a month, and showed up to all my appointments, paid all my dues, and, and then... He retired two months after I was off probation, and that was it. So I really couldn't say what that's about. And I'm, honestly, I wouldn't mind having a little clarification on it because that's kind of a surprise to me. So you never went to court and you dealt with the violation of probation? No, sir. I've never. This is honestly to the first of my recollection um, uh, because I was never, like, arrested for that or something like that. I, I don't, it's just nothing that's ever came about it. But I would like to add that the young lady, yes, yeah, she was 17, but that wasn't what she told me. She told me she was 22, and I was 27. So when you got someone that looks around your age, you know, and you jive well, sort of, you know, I know that's not the proper lingo, but, uh, you know, at that point in my life, my life is totally different now. You know, 20 years as a parent, as a grandfather you know it's it's different you know <coughs> so you have different sets of responsibilities and and my past <coughs> my past is colorful but it's I'm not I'm not that guy anymore you know so for a company then or you just saw somebody stranded that uh, needed help no ma'am uh, I was actually a, a technician for one of the largest dealerships in our community at the time it was Jeep, called Jeep City and so I was a certified technician, and so I, it was hot. It was the, the night of the block party. Uh, I'll never forget it, o o October 31st. It was a uh, Halloween night. And uh, so I stopped, and I thought, you know, what does it hurt to stop and help somebody? And like I mentioned, the car was broken. I wasn't going to leave her stranded out there. And so we struck up a great conversation, but one thing led to another. But she lied to me about her age. And 
the car that she had was stolen, the money that she had that she offered to take me out to dinner, it was actually stolen from her grandmother. So all this stuff I found out later. But if it pleases the council to know that through this situation, it changed my life. But the young lady that was involved, now she's happily married. She's got two children. You know, the Lord's changed her life like he did mine. But unfortunately, I have this demise on my background that just pops up every so often and reminds you that that you have a past <laughs> and that people like Mr. Mitchell are willing to give you a shot, even though he didn't ask me all this when I got hired, but he was willing to back me to be here today. So. And how long have you worked there? Uh, four months, but uh, in four months, I've handled all the infants, uh, invoices, billing, and things of that nature. Um, and so now it's the possibility of having to drive because the busy season's coming. So if it'll if it'll help him to answer the call, uh, to help this you know pretty city, then hey, I'm the one running at 3 a.m. <laughs> so, but that's up to the council. So I'm just curious how you got caught for stat rape. Did did she turn you in, or did no, her parents turn you in, or what happened? No, actually, um, and. It's not that I hesitate to say because I don't want to speak badly about anyone in either in law enforcement or that serves the community because my father was a state trooper, so I understand um, things are said and misappropriated at times. But the, the young lady had an, a list of issues that came with her. And at that point in time, other than defending my best friend, I never had anything, you know, uh, raised in church my whole life. My father was a police officer, and if you didn't do right, you got beat with a wooden broomstick, you know? It's just a, but um, with that said, um, you know, I'm sorry, I, I'm nervous. Can you restate your question? It's okay, I was just wondering how you ended up getting, I mean, it sounds like it was well, quote unquote consensual, but I'm wondering how you got arrested for it. Well, what it was at the time, and to the best of my knowledge, um, there was an influx of Hispanics that came to our community. Well, it was told to me and by a party I won't mention, but uh, they told me that they were gonna make an example out of me for, uh, for being a part of that. And it, it, you know, it hurt. It hurt because I, I, just like any other young person, you know, you make a mistake, but why should I be the, the poster boy for someone's crusade, so to speak? So, but anyways. Can I say something? Yes, of course. I was uh, probably as surprised uh, as anyone here when uh, Carlos had to reveal this to me. Um, he has worked for me for four months. He has not driven a record. His position is not going to be driving a record to pick up uh, car citizens of Nashville, his position will be driving a record to deliver a uh, skid steer, a mini excavator to sites where we're doing cleanups. He is not in the record business, he's in the, the cleanup side of our business. Uh, he has been a perfect gentleman. I have not had the first incident with him. And as I say, I was surprised. I, I think 20 year old mistake he's made, and y'all know I give a lot of people a lot of chances, but he is not said the first foul word since he's been with me, and um, I, I am not a bit afraid of him in any way whatsoever. If I was, believe me, the, the operation we run, it would show up really quick, and he's not done anything out of the way at all. Uh, but there again, he still will not be towing for the general public. He'll be delivering, he is in the spill response part of our, our business, and that's what he applied for, and that's the position he's working. So, in other words, when an 18 waiter rolls over and they spill the fuel and the oil, we have to clean that up. And that will be his position, is doing that. Would anyone like to make a motion regarding Mr. Burris's application? I will make a motion to approve the application. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for, for your time. Thank you.
Excuse me. We've got some uh, number of applications under other passenger vehicles for hire. We have a driver application for Robert William Honea. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Field. Making his application, he failed to. Uh, he had had over a period of time, he had had two DUIs. He only listed one of them. One was in 1987, one was in 19, it was in 2011. There, he's. He's qualified under the ordinance, but when he fails to list it, he gets to come in. Mr. Honea, why didn't you list the 1987 DUI? Oh, uh, it was dismissed. I, I totally forgot. I mean, 34 years ago, if you told me I was going to be standing here right now talking about this, I would just say you're crazy. Uh, it was dismissed. My lawyer, yeah, my, yeah, it was. Uh, I was not driving. Um, the uh, DA just, just wasn't going to prosecute it. Were you the owner of the vehicle? Yes. Somebody else was driving it. Nobody was driving. Nobody was driving. No. The police officer saw me get dropped off at the vehicle <clears throat> that was in a parking lot that had been sitting there for about three hours. He watched me go to the phone booth, make a phone call, go back, sit in my car. Pretty soon he walked up, knocked on the window, I rolled it down, and he said, uh, asked me what I was doing. I said, I'm waiting for my wife. And um, he said, have you been drinking? I said, yes. And he said, hand me the keys. The keys were on the driver's seat, or the passenger seat. And I hand him the keys. Next thing I know, he's arresting me. As, he just, as we're leaving, my wife is pulling in. And he says, you can pick him up over at so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, so you know, the state of Alaska law was like that. If you had control of the keys, if the keys were in reach of you and you were in the vehicle, you could be arrested for drunk driving. They've changed those laws. Um, since then, there has to be some sign of uh, intent, like keys in ignition, automobile on. Um, they arrested a gentleman. Uh, he was getting a ride home with his buddy. He passed out. He strapped in the passenger seat. Uh, his buddy evaded the police. Uh, the police showed up. The guy still passed out in the passenger seat, and they arrested him it's because the key, he was in the vehicle and it was running. Uh, they've they've rewritten their laws. Make a motion to approve Mr. Honea. Honea, yes. Honea's application. Uh -huh. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We also have a uh, request to recognize an address change by Diamond Louis limousine to 504 Southwood Park Place, Nashville. Yes, sir. All of the uh, below, we have uh, uh, a couple, we have two or three uh, address changes, then you have name change and the company application. All of them are in order. You're recommending a motion? This, this, is, this is for Diamond Lim Limousine LLC edition. Um, Mad Dog. Yeah, I, I, I think I think Diamond Limousine uh, address change to 504 South Park, Southwood Park. Then the LLC. In other words, Majestic Transportation is becoming an LLC and moving to 6615 Floral Court. The uh, Emerald Luxury Transportation is uh, becoming an LLC. Uh, Mad Dog uh, Transportation LLC wants to change its name to Mad Dog Transportation Services Incorporated. And then Abba Limo, Ambrose Transportation, Cheezerome uh, Holdings LLC, uh, Five Star Limo Service, Mr. Jack LLC, PH Transportation, and Seeley uh, Limo have all made applications for a new company. All right, I'm going to break this into two motions. Um, the first motion would be to approve. The first one, two, three, first three name changes and address changes for Majestic Limousine Services, Emerald Limousine the Luxury Transportation, and Mad Dog Services Inc. Would Diamond Limo include Diamond, Diamond, Diamond Limo? Oh. Sorry. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. I'm going to make a motion to. 
approve the application for the remaining one, two, three, six, seven, six, seven companies that are listed on our uh, agenda. PNH, Jack. Question. These are all brand new companies? Yes, sir. Okay. And this will take us over 200 OPVH say. companies in, in Nashville. So taxis are going down and these are going up? Yes, sir. Hmm. Well, that's another, I'm not sure what to do. And I'm guessing most of these are the big black limos we see around town. Or just the Lincoln Gone Nano. And yeah. we could we, we could actually probably let's see. I don't have I don't have a list of two, but I'd say it's a good possibility that would be more of the black cars than even running than ours. Oh really? Uh, yeah. One of my employees has a limo that he only runs on the weekend. Right, but is there a second regarding this from the county? For clients that he does it for. All those in favor? Aye. A motion passes. We've got two gentlemen in the audience. Are you with one of the companies? Yes, we are. Okay. With uh, Chula Crow. I pronounced it wrong, but it's Chula. Excuse me, Rob. I'm from the South. I can't say everything correct. <laughs> But it's already been approved, so yeah. just yeah. what you need to say would be my guess. Uh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'll do better. Thank you so much. Is there any other business, Mr. Fields? Uh, again, we do have the issue of Mr. Uh, McNally's uh, court appearance, uh, court work. He's not appearing, sorry. He'll be in federal court, so we're still, we need to uh, incapacitate that that worked out. What, what, and what does that start? Starts April 6th, the trial does. And, and for the record, it's not, I'm a lawyer defending somebody. I'm not one of the defendants. So. <laughs> I misspoke again. I, I, well, I, I heard through my left incapacitated. I heard over my right, my, Mr. McNally in court. So, you know, I'm defending someone. Now, I do want to also point out that I'm going to be uh, in court in Memphis for a client at our March meeting. Uh, so I'm not going to be able to attend that meeting. Uh, I'll be here in March. Okay. Well, what I'll commit to do is to make sure that I meet with Mr. McNally, come over, because if the commission may recall that Mr. McNally may be absent for seven, two or three, three months, three months in a row, and we talked about having an alternative meeting date. What I wanted to do was, uh, is see what schedule he's got, then work back with the commission, see what locations might be available for a meeting. One of the issues we have is actually finding meeting space. We've talked about, you know, for instance, there's uh, the, going to the Howard Building and, and to the Sunny West Center. Uh, uh, they're available on Fridays, for instance. Uh, if mm -hmm. we have to meet at night, we then it, again, it just depends what time of day and what we what day of the week you, we can come up with a meet, that everybody can meet. For instance, if Wednesdays work, it might be that this room might be available on Wednesdays instead of whatever the day is, maybe the day before. It's just a matter of trying to juggle a space in your schedule. Well, I'm, I'm, it's anticipated I'll be off Fridays. It won't happen every Friday, but if we, if we have court starting on Monday, we are anticipating being free on Friday. So my question would be is, uh, would people prefer to meet in the evenings during the week or Friday at some time? I think you're just trying to beat Mr. Hernandez's <laughs> <laughs> on the shortness of the meeting. So I think we've, got, we've got one minute left for, <laughs> for him to still prevail. So um, it's just my, I'm throwing that out there. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about it before. Some people thought they would prefer Friday morning. Uh, Those people would be me. Sunny West building. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, without knowing the day, mm -hmm. the only issue we might have between now and then are elections at, at power. Or Sunny West, and and I actually like the Thursday evening time slot. Um, yeah. I don't care. I just need a date, and then I'll tell you whether I can be there. I understand. <laughs> well, obviously I work for y'all, so whatever's night, yeah. whatever y'all, I'm going to be there. So. All right, Mr. Fields and I will meet and come up with dates that we can propose during the market meeting. 
or, or maybe send them out uh, ahead of time by email and people can that would be fine. Um, you could communicate back with one another but right. you could we could send it out and you could send it directly back to me and then I can then I can report back to the group okay well, well, we, any motion to adjourn? one question yes we got the press release from the mayor today he wants us to take on more work do we have any idea how many other of those transportainment vehicles are out there that we don't regulate uh, one of the first questions that has that has come up and, okay. and it's a valid question is, is what is the inventory there's there's really no way to know other than I standing on street and count because they since they're not regulated there's yeah. not a, there's not a central licensing office I you know dozens is probably safe yeah. I don't know when I go say hundreds yeah. but there are dozens and it'll also depend on the policy uh, how this comes out of either this commission or the council because council have to take final action is what is the what's the breadth of the of the ordinance in other words it's very one of the discussions going on in the state is how uh, broad the language is and I think that was intentional on the state's part is to say you know it's on the streets in Nashville it's important for the city to have options so do we just do uh, you know the basics or do, do we all do all do we do the trolleys for instance had a conversation with one of the trolley owners and in the start of the conversation he was very concerned and when I described what I anticip would anticipate in terms of we're gonna we do background of drivers we'd be looking for mechanical inspections we would be looking for um, uh, you know safety features and so forth but again that's not a decision I'd be making it'd be a decision more than likely assuming it passes and assuming it was given to the Commission to, to act on We'd, you would make a decision on what we you'd make recommendations we'd make proposals and the council would act on it okay. so we're a long way from actually doing oh, it I understand. Yeah. but I, I don't have it so that's a long I well, call, I, I, yeah, yeah. I, that's sort of what I thought the answer yeah. was nobody knows for sure no. well I'd have the same issue with this that I have with the scooters is that we charge the industry enough to pay for the regulation and that would be a part of your that conversation been, that hasn't been talked about enough when it comes to scooters Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes.